Hey guys, so today I'm going to be talking a little bit about um, just this idea of if love is the only truth, then why does evil exist? I'm going to be kind of going deeper into it than just, I mean, I think it's easy for a lot of us to say, okay, you know, love, love is the only truth. Okay, that sounds right to me. Uh, evil exists because it's necessary for duality. But I want to go to a little bit deeper because I want us to understand what it can mean for us on an individual level, not just on a collective level. Because, of course, we are all love. We are all an aspect of love. But let's just start with this idea of love is the only truth. So let's let's just uh, assume that that, that that is true. I believe it to be true. Um, you may or may not. But let's assume for a moment that it, that it is true so that we can explore that idea a little bit. So love is the only truth, which means at the point of um, the origins of everything, at the beginning, there was love. And, you know, a lot of times we'll have spiritual teachers encourage us to know thyself or, you know, think about who are you truly. If, if you think about it deep down, uh, who are you really? And most times, maybe not always, but most of these spiritual teachers who ask us those questions, they're wanting to, us to arrive at that answer of, I am love. I am oneness. I am the oneness that is love. You know, something along those lines. And I believe it's because love itself had an interest also in self-awareness. Love, in its origins, had an interest in understanding itself completely. So it's almost like love exhaled itself and spread itself out so that it could see everything and understand everything that there possibly was to know about itself. And for love to know everything about itself, it also had to understand how powerful it was. And for love to understand how powerful it was, perhaps we could say then that evil emerged in the de desire for under uh, of self-understanding. Evil emerged so that love could see that it is capable of loving in the presence of evil. That in fact, it is even capable of loving that which is evil. So everything that exists is an opportunity for love to come back to itself, for love to come back to a fuller understanding of itself. So then, you know, evil itself is love because evil is an expression of love in its um, in its interest or, you know, in its search for self-understanding, in its search for self-awareness and knowing what it truly is. So some of you might be asking, um, quite rightly, so does that mean that love created evil? Because that's, that's not very loving. And of course, we know that evil uh, causes a lot of pain and a lot of destruction in the world. So imagine that you are love trying to understand yourself. And in the process, you have created evil. You didn't intend to cause suffering. You didn't intend to cause pain. And yet in your search, in your search, we'll just leave it at that, you have caused evil and, and, and you've caused pain and you've caused um, destruction. Now here again is another opportunity for love to understand itself more fully. I have caused pain, and yet I can still love myself as love. And so I think because all of us are an aspect, a facet, an expression of love in its attempt to understand itself, we also like love have an interest in coming back to this fuller understanding of who we are. You know, I can love in the presence of evil. I can also love evil. That doesn't mean I condone evil. It doesn't mean I think that evil is great. 
but I can love someone who commits evil acts. I can have love for them. I, you know, I can have love. I can have hope that they're going to see the error of their ways and change. Um, I don't want to, them to continue in acts of evil, but I can still continue to be love always. I, like most of us, for example, can see that I have caused pain and suffering in the world, you know, and I can still love myself despite that. Again, it doesn't mean that I condone my own behavior. And sometimes we cause pain purposefully. Sometimes we cause pain inadvertently, um, you know, but it can be difficult still to love ourselves when when we can see that we have caused pain in someone else. But everything is an opportunity for love to come back to a greater awareness of itself. Love being each of us. Each of us are love. And so each of us is also in that process of coming back to that greater understanding. I'm simply love. There's this thing and there's that thing. And I can easily get distracted by all of that. But everything your boss's pit stains, uh, that paper clip, all of it, strangely enough, has been necessary for love to come back to a fuller understanding of itself. And if we, we don't want there to be suffering in the world any longer, suffering can end for each of us. And collectively, suffering can end at the point that we no longer need it to help us see ourselves as love. So the more we can come back to that awareness, I am love. The less suffering that we have to endure. So it's a thought, you know, I, and I, I personally see myself as someone spiritually and in, in my spiritual awareness, someone who's always evolving. I've had so many Pluto transits, you know, like I feel like I've lived multiple lifetimes here just in this one lifetime. That's what it feels like sometimes. And in an essence, it's true because Pluto is all about uh, death and rebirth. Um, but I think many of us, you know, view ourselves that way as ever evolving. So I'm not going to say that I know absolute truth, but this is a, a, a way of thinking about things that came into my awareness recently. And I thought that it I would share it because I, I, you know, recently I've asked God to deliver me up to the higher octave of my purpose and also to deliver me to greater happiness. I've always been someone who struggled, who felt like I was suffering and uh, just struggled with depression and I feel like I've made a lot of improvements with that. It's, you know, it's been a lifetime of trying to struggle with finding happiness, but in the last year and a half, maybe especially, I've done a lot of healing. It's a lot of it has been painful, but still healing that has led me back to greater happiness. And then recently I had this experience again where I just felt so miserable and, you know, was crying and <laughs> crying and gnashing of teeth and uh, just felt so miserable. And I was like, God, why? Why do I keep having to feel this? So I, I said, you know, I'll do whatever I need to do, you know, like deliver me, you know, help me to see how to live the next higher level of my purpose, how to bump it up. I'll do it. Uh, help me to see how to do that. And, and I said, you know, <laughs> please also deliver me to greater happiness. If that's not what you think that I need, then I'll try to accept that, but I was like, I, I think that I can probably be of greater service if I, if I do have greater happiness. I think that will be supportive of me in that process. So consider it, God, you know, just think about it. Um, and even since then, like, I, I feel like it's happening, you know. I do feel like it's happening. Um, things are already shifting. Um, I was asked to journal. Let me find the card here. Hold on just a moment. So I was asked to journal on the Super 7 Stone, which is a gemstone that I had never heard about, but it, it, uh, 
my attention was brought to it recently. It's a, a gemstone that includes, oh gosh, amethyst, cacoxanite, smoky quartz, clear quartz, rutilated quartz, geothite, and lepidocrite. But anyway, <clears throat> it's a stone that is about, um, it removes blockages holding you back from your life purpose. It stimulates the soul to its divine brilliance. It's a catalyst for expansion and transformation. So it's, you know, it made sense to me because I was being asked for that. Like, you know, help me align more fully with my life purpose than I have been. And I was also asked to, you know, journal on that in addition to this Eight of Wands card, specifically from the Everyday Witch deck. I think I've got my camera set up to transpose images, but it's the Eight of Wands. And it made a lot of sense to me, you know, I was like, why this specific uh, card? And I've always thought this was a really unique portrayal of the Eight of Wands. It's very different from most. And I'd never seen it in quite this way until I started journaling it. But you see how she's struggling with these Eight Wands. They're flying around in the air. They're not doing what she wants them to do. She's like, what is going on with these wands? They just won't do what I want them to do. And I myself have been having such an ego attachment to this YouTube channel. For months I've been struggling. My poor therapist has had to hear me talk about this so many times. And like psychologically I was working through it or I thought like, you know, specifically to view counts, you know, I was so attached and it was never enough. And then it was like, it's kind of like, you know, when you, you, you don't like, you know, your weight or whatever, and then you look back at a picture from high school many years ago. Some of you are just in high school or just gone out of it. But for this, us, us older people, you understand this. You look back at a picture from high school and you're like, whoa, I didn't realize how much I had it going on. Um, so <laughs> my view counts, uh, when I started having this ego attachment, were better than what they became. And in this process, it was just the ego attachment got greater and greater. And I was feeling more and more misery about something that really is so trivial. And I feel like what they were trying to say to me, and they delivered this message more than once. You know, I'd asked about this, I asked my guides about the view counts and all this before, and they tried to tell me I had like the five of ones come up with the tower card. And the message was, you're paying all this attention to these really trivial matters. Meanwhile, there's a big transformation that's about to happen. And I feel like that's what this card is saying as well. Sometimes and I'm like, oh, I like that message. I like the fact that a big transformation is about to happen. Okay, I'll put those piddly thoughts to the side, or I tried to right? It's hard. The, te uh, the ego attachment to it is so strong. But I feel like this card is saying that as well. She's not really seeing the big picture here. The reason these wands are not doing what she want, wants it has nothing to do with the wands. It's because there's literally a tornado brewing behind her, which is causing the wands to fly all over the place. But she's so focused on the little things, the wands, she's missing the big picture. And likewise, I've been missing the big picture. And it's ironic because I made a vlog entry a few weeks ago about living in the flow and understanding that when life presents you with an obstacle, it's really trying to reroute you to something else. And I thought maybe that's what the whole view count thing was about anyway, but I couldn't accept it, you know. Uh, I was like, well, there are other things that I've been wanting to do, and maybe this is just a sign to go do those things. It was more than that, though. Um, and it just took a lot for me to finally see it. Uh, and I, I'm not, you know, the tower card and a tornado, you might think that those are scary things. I don't feel that that's what it is at all. I don't feel like I'm being warned of something scary. I feel like for both of those, it's about like an epiphany or a greater awareness that is needing to dawn in my life. And the more that I'm focused on this small stuff, I'm not going to be able to allow that in. And I want to allow that in, you know, and in fact, that's what I've asked God for. <laughs> I asked God for the very thing that God was trying to give me anyway. Um, so, so yeah, in all of this process, at some point, I, I felt guided to um, take a hiatus from my channel. 
At first I thought they were saying just to get rid of the channel. I was like, <laughs> the ego attachment was too strong for that. But even the idea of it taking a break at first, I was like, do I really? Is that really? Is that what I'm supposed to do? Um, and I kept pushing that away too. I was like, no, I think if I just keep throwing videos out there and th throwing videos out there, eventually something will stick and I'll fix this piddly little problem that I'm not supposed to be focusing on anyway. It's missing the bigger picture here. But then finally, when I let myself really sit with it and contemplate it, it felt like a relief, you know. And, um, you know, I was starting to get so, like, just exhausted. And I was like, what's making me so exhausted? Again, you know, like the signs, the message, it will come to us in a million different ways. If that's what, if that's what is needed, it'll come to us in so many different ways before we can finally let it sink in. And so that that's what it is. I, I need this time away from the channel to kind of detach from the ego attachment, but also like, I feel like it's a time of um, being more in my receptive principle, um, learning, you know, um, gaining in greater awareness. And it's already started. That shift has already started. And I feel interested in exploring it. And I feel um, excited about it. Um, <laughs> you know, I've also applied to some therapy jobs. I got my graduate degree in social work last May. And because this channel has been doing so well, I hadn't applied to jobs because I was focusing my energy on the momentum of this channel. While the momentum was strong and uh, now the momentum just isn't strong and there, there are other things that um, need my attention. And so there, there are many purposes for me. Um, so that might be something that starts in this two month. I might start a therapist job, but uh, a few people have congratulated me, congratulated me and wished me well on my plans for this hiatus, but like I told them, I don't have necessarily specific plans. It's more like, you know, in the hermit card, when the hermit is holding up this lantern, he's still in darkness. The lantern only lights the way, you know, maybe a couple of footsteps ahead of him. And I feel like that's kind of how it is. I, I like it. Um, I like it. And that's how I was already kind of thinking about it. And then I was watching this video, which I shared with some of you, a link to it on my community page, where this woman mentions um, meeting buffalo, white buffalo calf woman <laughs> in this psychic, like multi-dimensional experience, which she'd never had before. And, uh, and white buffalo calf woman said to her, you make your path by walking. And so it's the same kind of thing. You don't necessarily have to have a plan. You don't necessarily have to know the outcome, you know, as tarot readers, we, we get asked for the outcome. And, you know, part of the draw to tarot for me is also that desire for myself to know the outcome. Uh, what's going to happen? Well, what's going to happen is whatever you make happen, you know, your choices uh, and the path that you walk will align with um maybe a greater plan for you, but it's nuanced, right? You know, our, our choices, um, have a tremendous impact. You know, there's, there's like the potential for certain things to happen, but our choices are really going to make the most influence of anything. It's like, I remember when I was a kid and we would play Mario brothers, my sister explained to me, she's like, the way this game is set up, the exact things happen. You know, the game starts with Mario and you see the little mushroom guy coming out. It's the same little mushroom guy or the same little turtle guy every time just coming out. Every time. It always starts the same way. And she's like, everything in the game is going to be absolutely the same. And it's only going to change depending on what you do. If you jump at this particular moment... You know, if you land in this particular spot because of where you started jumping or whatever, um, that's going to start the change. And then the game is already set to respond to that particular choice of yours. It's kind of what life is like. It's like a Mario Brothers game. 
Uh, everything is already set up in a certain way, but you're the catalyst for all of those particular potentials. There are a, li there are a limitless number of potentials for how the game of your life can play out. But ultimately, it's your choices more than anything else that are going to influence the outcome. Ultimately, the potentials are all there. The potentials are all in place. And your choices make all the difference. And so, you know, that's one of my dawning awarenesses. But I just feel like um, it's going to be an interesting two months. And I look forward to it. Um, I look forward to healing this ego attachment. It's pretty strong. So um, I'll take all the prayer that I can get, guys. But uh, but anyway, I, I wanted to let you all know I didn't just want to disappear and go on this hiatus without explaining because I, I know that there will be people who will be concerned about me because I've been gone a couple, like once I was gone for like two weeks between posting videos and I got uh, a message of concern from someone. So I don't want you all to think like two months. I don't, I don't want people to think that something bad has happened to me or uh, I just don't want to inspire that kind of fear in someone um, or anything like that. So, so yeah, I, I want to thank you as well for all of the kind wishes that I, I've gotten. Um, so what does this mean ultimately that I'm taking a break from the channel? It means that I won't be putting out new content in these two months. I won't be responding to comments. Uh, I will still be available for personal readings. And um, so you can you know, go to my website and get a reading from me there. Uh, I'll also be on keen.com a lot. So the link to my Keen profile will also be down below in the description box. So you can still get a reading for me. I don't feel an ego attachment to that. It's more like an ego attachment to the channel itself and... I just need to heal that. It's not good for me. It's not good for my service. You know, it's not good for anyone. So that's what it is. Um, thank you all for watching and being so supportive and loving. And I'll see you back here around April 1st, which is not an April Fool's joke. It just happens to be about two months from now. So that's when I'll see you again. I'll see you in April. Bye, guys.